Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus. Today's discussion is in the eschatology playlist of this YouTube channel and is entitled Coming in the Clouds. Before we begin a short prayer, a blessing, honor, glory, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit for now and forever and unto ages of ages. Amen. I pray to the triune God to be filled with the Holy Spirit so I'm empowered to speak truth without error and to interpret Holy Scripture correctly. All truth comes from God. Any errors are my own. I also pray that you, the listener, may likewise be filled with the Holy Spirit so that any truth I speak or any scripture that I interpret correctly is welcomed in your heart, your mind, and your soul. Now let us begin the discussion. So what we're going to go over today is some end time stuff about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we're going to start in Matthew chapter 13, looking at verses 24 to 30. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, obviously Jesus Christ speaking, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he says, Nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Same chapter of Matthew, verses 36 to 43. Then Jesus set the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, notice what this is referring to, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So a few little points. Notice at the end of the world, the reapers of the wicked will be the angels, and they're going to gather forth these tares, right, the illustration, in, in bundles and burn them in a fire. So just remember those little points. Now let's jump ahead to uh, chapter 24, verses 21 to 25, skipping ahead to 29 to 31. For then, this is talking about the kind of the one that, the, kind of the end of the world here. For then shall be great tribulation, remember that great tribulation, such as was not seen since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved, for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall raise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, skipping ahead to 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So notice this is talking about actually the angels... He's going to be coming on the cloud, and the angels are going to assist him to gathering the elect, the righteous, the wheat in the uh, parable. This is kind of reiterated in Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 27 here. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her life. Remember these details. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. So notice, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. So leaving the earth and going to heaven, right? Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 28. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. <clears throat> and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Now, this 
event is only in the Synoptic Gospels. It's not in John, but then John obviously writes about it in detail in the book of Revelation, which we're going to get to. Let's look at Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. And when he, Jesus Christ, had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, these are the, his disciples, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, obviously, most likely angelic spirit beings, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven on a cloud, so shall come in like manner on a cloud, as ye have seen him go into heaven, which is just reiterating what Christ taught in the Synoptic Gospels. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 to 28. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. For every man is in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ's at his coming. Notice when he comes, these are the individuals risen from dead. The first fruits is Christ himself. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So notice, the king will be the son until the Father has put all enemies, including death, under his feet. Then, by the way, the kingdom is transferred to the Father. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. So obviously the, the Father is not going to be under Christ. You know, in the, in the triune God, the authority structure is such that the Father is at the top of the authority. Remember, the Son is begotten of the Father. The Father is not begotten of the Son. The Spirit proceeds from the Father, you know, pro probably potentially through the Son and not the other way around. Verse 28, And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God, meaning the Father, may be all in all. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 57, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit corruption. By the way, when Christ appeared to the disciples, and this is mentioned in Luke chapter 24, um, in his resurrected, immortal, incorruptible, spiritual body. Did he describe it as a flesh and blood body? No, it was a flesh and bone body. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, right? And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be wrought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Unbelievers, right? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That is coming, right? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, those individuals alive on the earth until the second coming, right? The coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Notice that's reiterating what we just read in 1 Corinthians 15 about the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Where were we? 16, oh no, 17, sorry. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So notice, those asleep in Jesus, the spirits, right, will descend with the Lord, right, then the dead bodies, their dead bodies, will be raised and converted from the corruptible to the incorruptible. And then we shall be raised, right? And our bodies will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, as described in 1 Corinthians 14, or 15, excuse me. And then all of us together will go back with the Lord to heaven and forever be with the Lord. Revelation chapter 6 now. Now we'll see what John says about this. Verses 12 to 17. And I beheld when he, the Lamb, 
had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Remember this from Matthew, Mark, and Luke? And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondsman, and every freeman hid themselves the unsaved, of course, in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, the unbelievers, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, the triune God, and from the wrath of the Lamb, the God-man. For the day of his wrath, the God-man's wrath, is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 7, verses 1 through 3, and then skipping ahead to 9 through 12. And after these things, which we just read there, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not below on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Okay, so notice this is a, an angel coming with the seal of God, the seal of the living God, and he's going to seal these servants. I'm not going to get into this in this video, but this is 144,000, 12,000 of all of the basically all the tribes of, of, uh, of Israel, not including Dan. Um, and, and that's a whole other discussion, Lord willing, we'll get to in the future. Uh, verse 9, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne. Who are these? These are the individuals we just read about in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4, right? These are all those believers who now have incorruptible bodies coming from the earth, right? Those who were l remaining alive at the coming of Christ, plus all the ones whose bodies had died prior to that. Clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Forgive me if I skipped a few words. Uh, verse 10, And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Now verses 13 to 17. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these that are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to him, Pay, pay attention to the words. These are they which came out of great tribulation that we read in, in Matthew near the beginning of this uh, video, and have washed the robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. And we uh, just read about this in First Thessalonians 4, we'll forever be with the Lord. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Second like Revelation 8, <clears throat> verse 1 through 5 here. And when he had opened the seventh seal, again the Lamb, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So notice who has the trumpets, the angels, not the Lamb. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it unto the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Let's go to Revelation 14, verses 14 to 16. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, here it comes. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Remember this about the voice of the archangel? Notice who's going to be speaking in Revelation 14. You'll notice the Son of Man doesn't speak. These different archangels speak in crying out with a loud voice, including this one right here. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. This is going back to, the, to what we first saw in Matthew about the parable of the wheat and the tares, right? And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Verse 17, And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another ca angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him, notice where the voices are coming from, the archangels, that had the sharp sickle saying, I mean, they don't say it's archangels, but most likely, obviously, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. So notice in, in the parable of the wheat and the tares, the reapers b gathered the tares in bundles. So notice this, these are clusters. So it's groupings, right, of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle 
into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Just like, you know, this is a different illustration, the same point. In the parable of the wheat and tares, it's thrown into a fire. Here it's thrown into this great winepress. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles. So imagine where that, what, what height that would be, where the bridles of a horse would be, kind of where the neck of a horse is. What's that going to be? I don't know, four feet tall, something like that, right? Four or five feet, depending on the horse. By the space of 1,600 furlongs. A furlong is basically a city block. Eight city blocks is a mile. So 1,600 furlongs divided by eight would be 200 miles. So basically 200 miles long and about five feet high river of blood. That's, again, just a symbolic illustration of the wrath of God to these unbelievers, those who did not accept the free gift of God and did not bend the knee. Guess what? They're going to bend the knee anyway. So now let's go back to this uh, illustration from the beginning of the video because it kind of combines a bunch of the stuff we talked about. One thing that I didn't talk about was in the upper left corner, you'll see that's the, the lamb. Uh, this is first introduced in Revelation chapter 5, which we didn't go over. He's got seven eyes and seven horns. You can kind of, if you really look at it closely, you can imagine maybe there are seven eyes there and seven horns. Um, those represent the seven spirits of God. Um, anyway, so that's in the upper left corner, which we didn't go over. And then below that, there's some angels, you know, reading the everlasting gospel, etc., that we didn't really go over. But let's look to the upper right. You'll see in the purple with the crown, that represents the Son of Man coming on the clouds. Notice he's going to reap. Then there's an other angel kind of towards the top of the image to Christ, who's wearing that kind of purple-gray color, left wearing kind of red. Notice that's about to reap the wicked. And then notice there's a to the right, there's an angel kind of in green coming out, and that's going to be crying out to the angel in red to reap the wicked. And then you'll see the angel kind of with his hands out right in front of Christ, his hands outstretched to him. That represents the angel saying, hey, the time is right, reap, time, the time is ready, forgive me, for you to reap, you know, basically the righteous. And below that, you'll see again, notice really towards the bottom uh, right corner of the image, you'll see gathering the wheat is, and, and again with that sickle, it representing the righteous is Christ. And you'll see, even though they changed the color, it's in yellow, you'll see another angel coming down reaping the wicked, and notice it's the clusters of the grapes. You don't really see the tares here, but notice how it's combining a bunch of stuff that we talked about. So hopefully that, I mean, I think that's a very, very cool image, combining all these different accounts in the Bible into one image. It's beautiful. I pray spoke truth and interpreted Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. If it was a blessing to you, I would greatly appreciate it. If you could like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Lord willing, we shall meet again. May the Holy Trinity bless us all.